Five years ago, the enemy occupied your homeland. During those last five years, you've been starving, been a second class citizen, and you've been wondering when this would end. And now, you have one chance, one small chance at liberation. Do you take that chance or do you not take that chance? Madame Toastmasters, your members and most welcome guests. In summer of 1944, Germany was in the process of losing World War II. In the West, the Allies swept in to liberate France and in the East, the Soviet army was just about to start the process of crossing into Poland. But things were somewhat complicated on the ground. The Polish resistance and its government in exile had a complicated relationship with the Soviet Union. And the prospect of trading one tyrant, one occupier for another, was very, very real. And in that situation, something had to be done. The city of Warsaw, capital of Poland, was supposed to be the centerpiece of German defense in the East. Could something be done from within to weaken the defenses? For years, an entire underground state and army waited for the moment to strike, recruiting, setting up communication, cha communication channels, even building weapons in secret workshop in the shadows. At the end of July 1944, the decision was made by the commander of the Home Army, Armia Kreuzer, Tabus Bohr, to strike, strike the enemy with all its might. Upon the news of the rising, the reaction of the population was euphoric. Freedom came at last. For the first time in five years, Poles were free to practice their culture, their faith, and to fight for their freedom. The underground state apparatus swung into action, and very quickly, the city was administered once again, almost as if the war had never happened. By the tens of thousands, men and boys volunteered to fight to drive out the occupier. No, you're not going. You're only 15. You're too young. This is his time. Son, don't get killed doing anything stupid. Don't hide, don't escape, you might get killed. Just don't get killed doing anything stupid. And so, young Tomek, 15 years old, went to war to liberate his city. Of the 50,000 insurgents, less than one in 10 had a gun in which to fight. But the nevertheless, Three quarters of the cities were liberated in a matter of days. The main post office, one of the train stations, were liberated and used. Even one of the major German arsenals were taken over by the insurgents. The rising nonetheless failed some of its objective, the airport and the bridges over the river. German reaction was swift, furious and brutal. Orders from Hitler were the city must be destroyed. It must be punished to serve as an example for others. A Kurzgruppe was formed, including crack SS units, to retake Warsaw from the insurgents. They were held by heavy artillery, including a gun capable of blowing a skyscraper with one round that weighed one ton each. One of the units taking part in retaking in fighting off the insurgent was SS Sturm Brigade, Dear Levanga. The soldiers of that unit were poachers, a rabble, misfits, disciplinary reject from other units, uh, morals, in the word of one historian, and its leader, Oscar Dilavanga, 
I'd been convicted pre-war for the rape of a 14-year-old girl. This unit was unleashed on the city, and in the last coming few days, over 100,000 Varsovian paid the price in their lives. Massacres, rape, and pillage and shit. This strengthened the resistance of the army and the terribly, and reinforcement was soon arrived. The Soviet Union would arrive and swiftly with tanks to liberate the city. The Royal Air Force also swung into the actions, parachuting supplies flying all the way from Italy. Fighting went on for weeks, and it turned into over a month. The rising was only supposed to last for about a few days, a week at most. And in the end, after 63 days, the decision was made to surrender. By then, water had been cut off, food had become scarce, ammunition was completely unavailable. Something had to be done to at least save some of the population. The decision was made to surrender. Fighters were sent to prisoners of war camp, and civilian inhabitants deported to work to death in the German slave economy. But where were the Soviets supposed to come in to liberate the city? Stalin made a faithful decision to stop his army on the other bank of the river. They could hear the fighting, they could see the fighting, but they would not cross the river. Political reason. Defeated Warsaw would be much easier to become the capital of a communist state. And so Poland ended up trading one tyranny for another. And you, what would you have done in that situation? Was a, when a flicker, a whisper of freedom was available, when you had a chance, just one chance, to seize this whisper of freedom, what would you have done? You have rose up to fight or not? I know I would. Because it is better to die a free man than to die as a slave. Warszawa! Fratsch!